Italy. Um, so this project of my village detailed designs has come about uh, as a result, probably out of feedback and following the village green project that we, um, was pursued last year, I think it was. We got a lot of feedback from the community about other projects that people were keen to see happen here at Dinner Plain. We know we've done a couple of master plans up here mm -hmm. uh, over probably the last decade. Yeah. Um, so we're not looking, we don't intend this project to be another master plan that just gets put on the shelf and then we change in a couple of years' time. What we want to produce is detailed designs which can feed directly into a capital works program, so into Upland Child Council's project pipeline, prioritised by the community, identified by the community as what is important to be building in terms of infrastructure or any other things up here in Dinner Plain over the coming years. So we know Dinner Plain has a reserve of funds. We're not looking to, in this project, limit ourselves by that reserve. We want to think bigger than that, but we do identify that or recognise that we've got a certain amount of fund already sitting there and we want to prioritise you know, or identify what is most important to the community so that we can build that first and then continue to seek more funds as the years go by to, to deliver the rest. So the feedback too we can see is that there's two key precincts in Dinner Plain. It's the village centre that we're in here, this commercial centre sort of extends a bit up Big Monster Drive and around the roundabout. And there's also the Scrubbers End precinct, which is where the snow park is, Blizzard Brewery, obviously the um, toboggan run and all that, which has, we've seen grow uh, in terms of its popularity in recent years. And then visitors finding their way between the two precincts we see is also important. So that's the focus of this work. Um, and so it's those sort of three aspects, I suppose, the village centre of Scrubber's End and your wayfinder between the two. There are some other capital works projects happening this year. So that includes tracks and trails, wayfinding signage. That's not part of this project, but it, Robin is considering that is happening this year. Yeah. So that's specifically for recreational tracks and trails, cross country, um, mountain bike trails, walking, um, yeah, all those kind of tracks and trails. So when Robin talks about wayfinding, it's more about between the two precincts. It's not so much about the tracks and trails. Uh, we are also doing some road renewal, renewal works, which we do every year in Dinner Plain. And this year, I think the budget's about 15,000 for them. Um, we've already progressed some investigations down at the Scrubbers End precinct, so that we've got a bit of a head start, because we know there's also some safety works that need to happen at the bottom of the ski slope and the toboggan slope. So we're well underway in those investigations so that we're ready to get in there basically as soon as we're like locked in what we want to do down there. Um, so I'll pass it over to Robin to explain the process, where we've come from, why we're showing what we're showing and next steps and we'll take, we can take questions at any time if, you want to, if you're not clear on anything that's being explained. Yeah, that'd be great. But we can certainly ask questions at the end if you just want to wait until then as well. Thank you. Thanks. Well, thanks everyone for coming along today. It's good to have a good turnout. I'm not sure how many we're going to be here, so it's um, this is successful. Um, so as Francine said, I'm Robin Butcher. I'm from Bush Projects. I'm co-director there. Um, so today's workshop is I'm calling it a workshop rather than a meeting because I'm trying to I want to get as much information from you guys as possible so that it can inform what the designs are for dinner plan as well. So just a bit of introductions, similar to what Francine has just done. Um, the background of the project, which is also just getting me up to speed with what has been happening pretty much over the past 15 years within Dinner Plain. Um, I'll first start at our initial sketches. So these are just really broad brush look at a bit of analysis and um, what we see as, as going on in the site, but I'm welcoming any comments and feedback on that. Um, and then looking at a series of preset images that we've seen as could be appropriate for dinner plan considering the site context and the environmental values of the, the work that's been done to date so far. Um, then discussion, um, hopefully there will be a good discussion amongst everyone. 
Um, and then really where to from this point on, so what happens tomorrow in the next weeks and months after this. So, as an intro, I'm Robin, I'm co-director of Bush Projects. Um, I'm based in Yakindanda, so nice two hour pleasurely drive over here today, which is good. Um, I have a business partner, Sarah, who's down in Melbourne, uh, but she's from up at um, uh, Holbrook kind of way, so she's been up around here for quite a long time. Um, and also have two other uh, colleagues on board with the project, Matthew Hamilton and Nikki Schwabby, but we're all landscape architects and all heavily involved in the projects as well. These are two other key projects that we've had on the cards this year. Um, one down at Lawn Foreshore, Point Grey, and then another one over at Cocoon Art and Gundar Creek. So both of them are both quite environmental projects, but looking at um, environmental education and recreation and those sorts of things. So they've got some similar overlapping principles that we can sort of bring to the table here as well. So as a project overview, um, as Francine was saying, it's not a master plan. We're not looking at overall, we're looking at context, but not looking at drawing a huge big plan of all into the planes. We're really looking at two precincts and how to connect them together for both pedestrians and vehicles. So at the end of this process, what we want to have is some really good detailed plans that we've got a QS, a quantity surveyor on board with the project, so they'll be able to associate funding to them, so the council will be able to um, and community be able to put them into the uh, capital works program over the next five years or so, or however, however long it needs to be, depending on what um, scope we uh, design into the, into the project. Does that make sense, people? Yeah. Um, so as a project timeline, uh, I was engaged in early November, so it's been a quick process so far, but over November um, we had a briefing meeting about three weeks ago up here. Um, some of the, uh, Josie was here with some of the other members of the community as well. Um, we had to just site walk, uh, um, and I've been reading a lot of the background documents, so all the old master plan reports and all those other documents and things that have been prepared over, over the past 10 plus years or so. I think 2008 was the oldest document that I was looking at. Um, so at the moment, we're in the draft concept or concept phase, which is what today's meeting is about and getting first-hand community response. We've also got another community meeting planned for, I think it's the 19th of January. Um, so that'll be my Saturday afternoon, so hopefully there'll be other people here that are here on holidays that are residents as well. But also getting some of that tourist market up here as well to um, talk to them about what they see as that would be important too. Um, and then we've got the response time open until I think the 25th of January. So just before everyone goes back to school and work, I suppose. Um, just to get all those responses back together, then I'll consolidate all that feedback, put it into a, an, into a next iteration of the designs. So that'll be looking at it more closely about how we can actually make things work with the right road widths and parking allowances and all that sort of thing. I've got a traffic engineer on board with my project as well, so that'll be keen to um, come in to help make sure that we've got the right traffic flows and those sorts of things, because that seems to be quite an issue in between the town centre and also down at Scrubbers End as well. Um, then we'll have another session of community consultations, so we're aiming for that to be about late February or so, just depending on how the project goes throughout that time, um, what feedback is today and throughout the, this phase of consultation. Um, and then from there we'll have yet another community session go into a round of approvals and then go into more of a detailed design approach for the two, two precincts. So all that we're looking at trying to get things done by the end of March, but that may, that may extend out to April or so as, as the project commences. But we're on board to try to make this an effective process so that we can really key into the Capital Works um, program as soon as possible. Is that all good? So as a bit of an overview of the site, everyone knows it's a clean, of course, but um, the areas we're looking at is the town centre. So, and that includes access along Great, um, Great Alpine Road and just making it have a bit more of a site presence, um, allowing people to turn in so they're not just driving past, um, trying to bring the tourist crowd in as well into the area. So that goes down to where the um, base of the roundabout is, near the Dinner Plain Hotel and the Onsen. Um, and we're also looking at this section of Big Monster Drive that connects down to Scrubbers End. So just looking at different ways that we could uh, convert that road, whether it's a one-way road or a shared system or all those sorts of things about how to have safe movement for both 
pedestrians, cars, and service and maintenance vehicles as well. And then down at the scrubber's end section, um, looking at car parking to ends of both of the slopes, so the ski slope and the toboggan run, um, and then looking at uh, potential improvements of the parking situations there as well. So whether that happens at the depot end or whether we can try to um, put in some long-term overnight parking there as well. Um, and yeah, other sorts of um, landscape treatment works, so either tree plantings or vegetation works as well. Um, So I'll just run through this quickly. I've got a, um, a, a report that I'll be able to hand out to everyone. Should everyone get them now, do you think? Or? Yeah, no, we can. We'll just see yeah, that later. Yeah, come on. Um, so this is just more as a background of what we've done as a bit of research for up at the dinner plane. But it's got quite strong cultural heritage from uh, the indigenous communities that used to uh, um, gather up here, as well as down in the valleys. Um, all the food sources are quite plentiful up here, particularly at the spring and summer periods, all of the bogle moss. Um, but then also right through, through um, colonial settlers as well, with um, all the grazing and cattle properties up this way too. And that still makes reference today to the architectural heritage as well from what McIntyre did 30 odd years ago when establishing the, the village. So all the architectural styles still reference those original huts that are up here, and I think that's quite strong and evident in the um, material palette and material suite that's up here as well, and architectural stylings. I won't read through this, but there's a, this is just a snapshot of what we've sort of gone through um, with the background report. So, the McIntyre Partnership Master Plan from 1988, we've had a quick look over what we could find online for that. Um, the Master Plan from 2008. Um, which was a really good document actually, and I still think some of their principles are quite valid in the work that we're still doing today. So in, the, in their vision, um, it was about creating a vibrant, friendly, unique village resort with a sustainable economic, social and environmental base, which offers year-round opportunities for recreation, learning and enjoyment in a high altitude al alpine setting. So I still think that's quite relevant today, nothing's really changed about that. Um, but linking to the village character, that it's about encouraging provision of high quality development, responsive to the unique nature of the alpine environment, and about creating landmarks and destinations. So about really trying to gather um, people from around Australia to know that this is quite a sensitive and quite an important site um, to come to. Um, also looking at the master plan from 2015, um, which from that project, other projects sort of um, spanned out from as well. So the Village Green Projects Works, um, uh, there was, was a side track of the master plan from 2015, I suppose, um, and just how that reorientated some of the new priorities that has come out from that, which has highlighted the need for better traffic and parking and um, improvement works down to the snow, snow park with just the success of what that has been done there also. Um, also looking at the mountain bike trails, so stage one has been implemented, stage two has just been awarded, I think, for construction early next year, so that'll be well underway um, soon enough. Um, we've done a bit of research into the um, EVC, so the um, ecological vegetation classes, so there's some really sensitive and um, uh, yeah, sensitive vegetation up in this area, particularly the South Alpine woodland and grasslands, and we've also got the Alpine bog as well, which is down uh, south a bit further. Sorry, I keep on getting confused with the trees north here. Um, uh, which will, we think is really key, particularly being landscape architects and in this amazing setting, that we need to ensure that, that, those, um, that the vegetation and sensitivity of it is enhanced and encouraged. Um, and also encouraging the education of that as well. Um, I've gone through some of the consultation that Council has done for its three previous projects, and that's been over the past couple of years, which has gone through about the resetting of the priorities and those sorts of things. Um, and also work that's come out of the um, Virginia Plain Residence Business Operators Association, um, and just the priorities from a letter that I had sent through to Council as well. So about looking at parking, at traffic flow at the CFA or multi-purpose station, about green season activities, and about signage and tracks and trails. So out of all those ones, we're 
all them are kind of underway. There's been, I know Council's in discussion with CFA as well, trying to negotiate sites as far as I'm understanding. Um, but our project in particular focuses on the parking traffic flow, um, looking at green season activities of what we could encourage and include up here. And then as Francine was saying, the signage for the tracks and trails is underway at the moment as well. Um, which is the final project on there, but the trailheads and wayfinding, which is yeah, underway. There's also other documents that we've gone through, but I think that was enough to sort of give you a bit of snapshot to try to bring me up to speed with the amount of work that has been done previously. So, um, research into local um, biodiversity, um, particularly with the alpine woodlands and grasslands, and it's it's such a significant asset to the community up here, and I really think that can be a strong draw card, particularly from a education tourism perspective and um, education and uh, what's the other word? Um, like recreation perspective as well, sort of bushwalkers and campers and hikers and trail riders and those sorts of things, really trying to draw, have this as a draw card for those sorts of activities. Um, and then looking at the Victorian Alpine Study and Indigenous Heritage, so yeah, as again, the biodiversity is is to be preserved and looking at strategic ongoing maintenance of how we can enhance those areas as well and make it um, make it this economic draw card for the area as well that can really pull on um, the tourist market to try to engage them to come up here that little bit um, longer as well. Like even going down to detail about different signage elements that you could suggest for particular species that are quite endangered but are only found up here. Um, people will come all around just to see those sorts of things. So as an overview, so that's the research. Has anyone got questions or queries on any of that stuff? Cool. Feel free to um, jump out any time. Um, so as an overview, we're looking at just the existing circulation network throughout Dinner Plain. Um, all the yellow lines are uh, like pedestrian and cross-country scheme. So there's quite a few of them, particularly up in the, the northeast area, but there's ones that connect out to Hotham and down to um, the other sections of the dinner plain also. Um, the green network is the current bus network, so the coach comes through um, allow, around the people to drive and then cuts back down through Halter Lane before coming up to the main roundabout again at Horseshoe, is it Horse, Horseshoe Bend? Horseshoe Bend. Oh, Horseshoe Circle, Horseshoe Circle sorry. Um, and then looking at the different parking as well. So we've got the, the lighter blue color as the existing day parking, and then we've got the darker blue area, which is only really done at Scrubbers End as the existing overnight. I understand that up at the roundabout, the sun at um, peak season, some um, gets used for overnight parking, particularly up here as well, as far as I'm aware. Um, not at no. Not overnight, no. Day. Just for the clearing side of things. It's only day parking. It's only day parking, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's only really down at the bottom of Scrubbers End area as well. Um, yeah, and then the pink is the beginning of the mountain bike, so that's just the stage one. Stage two is not mapped on there, just yet. Um, and the green dots are looking at the bus stops, so they're the coach stops that are around the way. And the orange dots are looking at ways that uh, first attempt at looking at where wayfinding elements need to be to sort of connect these two precincts together. Um, so about looking at from that existing roundabout, from Big Buster Drive, down past Towers Road, Drive and Lanes, and then where to turn at Scrubbers End. I think that's the most confusing part because it's just not very descriptive to head down that way. Um, so it's about really highlighting that as a, as a key intersection. And then also drawing people down to all the way at the, um, the toboggan run. The first time I came up to site, um, just at the end of the snow season, the, um, I didn't know the Toboggan Run was there. I stopped at the ski slopes. I didn't know that there was um, further slopes from there. So I think that's an important thing to try to connect them on to make people aware of it. So just looking at events and programming. Um, so we know that it's really popular up here in snow season with um, the, um, the, the slopes and those sorts of things just snow play, the cross country skiing, toboggan runs, and the husky sleds, which I think is just awesome. I didn't know that existed up here before, but it's yeah, quite a popular um, event. Um, also with this, um, the summer programs, all the tracks and trails that are existing, 
the mountain biking, which is just going to increase over time, um, the trail riding, and also the ever popular frisbee golf, which is, is awesome. It's a, as a landscape architect, you tend to put that on a plan as something that could be delivered to activate a site that's rarely ever delivered, but it's so great that it's here and people are using it because it's such a it's an easy element to um, incorporate into site that doesn't interfere to so much, but kind of activates and then lets makes people play along the way to try to encourage a, a bit of more activity. So, um, beginning with uh, the concept sketches, we'll go through what our design approach has been. So basically what our principles are when we're approaching um, the design at the dinner plane. Um, we'll first look at the town entry sketch, um, then the big monster drive, then the scrubber's end, and then we'll look over the precedent images that can reflect upon each of those areas as we go through. So as our project approach, um, generally what we're doing is responding to a sensitive landscape. So we're aware that we're in such a sensitive area and we want to make sure that we're not, um, we're not uh, encroaching or impeding on the existing landscape. We want to try to enhance it and encourage um, better growth and those sorts of things. But it is a setting in, in some of the rarest plant communities in Australia and just also the architectural heritage of the site as well. I think that's quite important and we don't want to encroach on that. Um, but the outcome is to support the village's long-term viability. And this is from an economic viability of trying to draw tourists in and other businesses into the area, but also just um, to address like the everyday, day-to-day -day lives of people that live here as well. So just trying to look at making sure that the town isn't going to, um, that it's going to improve over time as well. Um, but the process, so we're looking at context and then we're looking at strategic gestures. So overall context and then particular points along the way that we can insert things in that um, as funding becomes available can just be simple elements that can be delivered. Um, the style guide, so making sure that it's long lasting and uh, it's got a high impact. Um, it's such high extreme weather conditions up here, I don't think there's any other towns in Australia quite like it having the extreme snow and the extreme heat. Um, so the weather elements we design would be a high impact, durable, get affordable and sustainable. So whether they're furniture, whether it's wayfinding, whether that's surface treatment or any other objects that get inserted into the landscape, we'll make sure that they're of um, high quality. Um, and then the final one is about access, about it being a safe and legible circulation. So first and foremost, it's about having comfortable and safe and direct pedestrian access. At the moment there isn't strong pedestrian connections, particularly along Big Mustard Drive and even in the town centre from the east to west business district, there's no clear pathways that I can see at least. Um, so it's about trying to make sure that we're improving those connections for people to get across. Um, that car parking needs to be legible and of high quality. Um, and sorry, the screen's reflecting on my um, that it provides a safe environment for bike riding and skiing of all ages. So that's for all the all the extra trails, so the cross country skiing and the mountain biking and those sorts of things. So they've got good trailhead connections and making sure that it's safe and um, fun at the same time. But um, bus and commercial vehicles um, should be prioritised as well, just to make sure that they've got efficient operations. So that's for all the snow ploughing or the traffic for the um, the garbage truck, all those sorts of things, loading in and out for all the businesses and those sorts of things. And then, um, and then the, the private vehicles. So they'll have free access to the streets and roads, um, but lower priority than other modes because we want people to have a to park once kind of experience when they come to the dinner plane. So you park once, then you can just walk or get about however else. You don't have to worry about being in the car, so you can just get into neutral and be on holidays. That will sound good. Any comments? Alright, so we'll just get into some of the sketches. So, this is the town centre. Um, so, we're, this is just the existing conditions, so about how the, what facilities are here at the moment. Um, there's a whole lot of concrete area that's here that isn't as utilised as well as what it could be. There's a lot of parking space, which gets used at, over the high season, but then in summer season, like now, you only see what, 10, 20 cars out there at most. So it's about trying to um, not have that as a direct impact as soon as you enter dinner plane as well, so it can have more of a softer 
um, town centre focus. Um, so some of the things that we're looking at is just from the actual entrance from Great Outline Road. And so at the moment there's the two entrance entrance halls, but there's opportunity to sort of do other things along the way that can sort of encourage I'd say spike sight lines into the areas to make it more visible that there's something here so people just don't drive past and go into Hotham or go ahead and going down to Omeo. Um, there's the Fitz Circuit, Fitz East Circuit that links all the way up and also the Bright Long Trail as well that links over Hotham. So it's a key area for these two key trails of linking into this main central hub space as well that goes to where the um, dinner plane uh, info hub is as well. Is that what it's called? Info hub? Um, so the commercial district also on this side of the street, so it's all up through here, but then with other businesses as well, the hotel and the onsen retreat and a few other businesses here. Um, but it's about this, really this connection from Horseshoe Circuit into Big Mustard Drive or around down to this part of Big Mustard Drive or back out again. When we were here for lunch a few weeks ago, we just were sitting outside at the, at the cafe and just seeing the amount of people that didn't know what to do when they were there. It was quite surprising that people were just cutting back around this way. I think there was a group of maybe five or six motorbikes that just came around and went back out again. There was a Winnebago that got stuck here that wasn't sure where to go because he wanted to get back into here again. So he had to go back around and come back through. Um, so it's, um, what we'll be looking at is the main circulation of that space for traffic flow, mainly. So, messy sketches. Um, so when we're looking at the town centre, we're looking at the orientation, so having a good sense of point of arrival as soon as you get into site. Um, looking at wayfinding for both from a pedestrian's point of view, but also in a car. As you enter through here, there's some signage elements that are almost blocking your view about where you want to go. The big um, the stone walls that were just before the car park, you can't see beyond that there is an entrance into it. So there's elements that are there that are trying to be helpful, but they kind of impede your, your views as well. Um, we're looking at car parking, so both short-term and long-term car parking. Um, uh, better amenities for day visitors as well, to make people stay a little bit longer than a, um, a drive around the circuit or a stop off for a coffee. Um, and then looking at improving circulation, which also includes drop off and pick up areas as well. So what we're looking at is this, so sight lines that come through from Hotham and just ways of trying to um, draw people's eye, I suppose, still from a safe point of view, still driving, but so that there's, you can see that there's something coming through here and also from Omeo's way as well. Um, but people come in, they, you, they've got a good view down, but then when they get in, they kind of get obstructed by things and not sure where to go. They don't want to park maybe straight away, but they um, want to see what else is happening. So they come in, do a circuit or come back around through Big Master. Um, just noted that this area is kind of confusing with where people are going and what they're wanting to do, like the motorbikes that keep on coming around this way at this intersection. Um, it's, you're inclined to, when you're driving down here, to just keep on driving down and come out rather than go around this way. It's, it feels natural to be able to do that sort of thing. Um, that there's no real good connection across the whole roundabout for pedestrian access. Um, particularly in sort of snow season, I imagine, that everything is just covered, so you're not sure where to go. Um, and that cars just sort of stop around the way, not knowing where to go. Like the, the slip lane to get into this parking area is kind of confusing as well, like you can easily miss that coming in. So it's about just, it's about um, highlighting ways that have got um, improved movement and circulation for people in cars. So it's when, it's, when you're a tourist, you've always got someone else yelling in your ear about where to go and where you shouldn't go, so it's about it's having that really clear, so it's more um, intuitive of where that movement should go. Does that really make sense? In a rough sketchy way? Yeah. So, this is our first attempt at um, looking at improved circulation and access throughout the site. So the first thing that you'll notice is that we've gotten rid of this road through here and just made this as a two-way section. So by doing that, it frees up a whole lot of space within here and just really to direct people 
um, into this one, one section. So what we wanted to do is draw people in and make it a really clear point that there's like a threshold treatment for pedestrians to connect over from the east to the west. So all the yellow is like also like full court space, so it could be a generous three metre wide um, area that people can, can walk across and it's more of a, um, I suppose it's what the cattle grates do here, but it brings it up to where the activity actually is. So it's sort of just highlights to people that this is a shared space. So just have people as well slow down, take in new surroundings and have a, have a think of what's here. So about coming in, um, you've got the opportunity to come into this car park as well. What we've proposed is we've pulled that down slightly to try to improve that um, that day parking facility through there. Um, so from here, you directly come up and you come to a T intersection. So at this point, we've got, we can either turn left or right. And so if we turn um, left, sorry, I'm just trying to associate myself. If we turn left, that goes up to Big Master Drive. Or if we turn right, we can go down to the other end of Big Master Drive through there. So it, it's, it pulls, in some respects, it's a similar situation to what it was, but it just sort of highlights it a bit more clearer rather than a roundabout. It's a T intersection, so people have to stop. They don't have to, um, yeah, they're forced to stop rather than give way or negotiate where you go from there. Um, so one of the big moves that we're proposing that I'll go into in the next um, section of town is proposing that Big Mustard Drive is converted to a one-way street. Um, the whole season, the, all the way through the year, rather than just at the snow season. And that's to improve uh, circulation and flow. I've heard that um, it gets a bit tricky over the winter times um, when there's two-way cars coming down and people are parking and the, the busyness of this business district right here kind of forms a bit of a bottleneck. So what we're trying to do is to stop that by just having it as a one-way circuit and looking at other pull-in um, pull um, drop-off pickup bays along that section. Oh, we're working not all the way around. Oh, yeah, not all the way around as well. So only, only as far as Scrubs end. Yeah, only to that to the east, northeast section. The rest of it to still be two-way. So which it, currently is in the two way. Yeah, which currently is in winter, that's right. So people were saying, I um, think Carl mentioned it last time, that um, people that come here in winter time and then in summertime get confused at which way is, is it, it's, it's just not following the signs. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and so that's why leg legibility and wayfinding is so important to have really clear, iconic signs that people can navigate around easily. Um, the other thing. Okay, so from at the entrance point, at the moment there's the drop off um, for the buses down here. What we've done, and I find that quite outside of sight. So what we've done is pull it up into this space. So when you're here, you're in this threshold zone of pedestrian area, and you can connect easily up to the, the forecourt space in front of the businesses. So it becomes a direct connection for people that are coming by bus, and come in and do all the services that you need to do from that point on, which I think just brings it into, you've actually landed in the town centre rather than just outside. I know it's not much of a move, but I think it will make a, it's a big gesture over time. Um, so once you enter into this space as well, um, so by turning right, it's a two-way, so down from Big Muster, back up to Horseshoe Circuit. But if you turn right and then come back through this way, what we've proposed is turning this into more of a shared zone. So um, having it as just a slower, slower pace, so it's it's more, it's more connected to the central island of, um, that's, that's there already, so it's got more of a park feel to it, maybe not with any sort of other um, facilities or elements that are there, but I'm just trying to make this a bit more pedestrian friendly through that space as well. And by increasing the day parking along this strip as well, what we've done is we've, we've flipped the parking to the outside. At the moment it's on the inside. Um, when it's on the outside it becomes a bit more safer for people getting in and out of the car that they've got direct access to a path that connects them back up to the main um, business district or around to the, um, the onsen and retreat area. Um, so these big stars are elements about, um, about destination hub and wayfinding, more from a pedestrian point of view. So because what we really want to do is make people park easily and get out of their cars and 
just be in the beautiful landscape that is dinner plain. So by having really clear markers with, with um, good signage, wayfinding information about where you're going to go and, and that sort of thing, um, this will lead people back up Big Monster Drive, or this one can connect people onto the broader circuits that are there. There's already some existing signage that's there, but I think we can improve upon that to make it a bit more legible and more iconic as well to, um, to draw people in. Um, so what we proposed is this being day parking. We've got it on an angle, so it's easy to drive in and drive back out. It's just like a one-way circuit. Um, this being day parking here as well. Um, the parking to this side, we've pulled that into being along this main road as well. So at the moment, I've, uh, what we've found is that it seems to be confusing of coming in and this whole big concreted area that doesn't necessarily get used that much over the course of the season. So we propose pulling that in to the road and having that as um, perpendicular parking, but then um, highlighting this area as overflow parking or event space. So in um, high season, that can be um, additional uh, parking, so whether it's a, a grass creek surface or something like that, as opposed to a concrete, it'll, it'll lead more to the entrance area coming in, but it's more seen as a green area rather than as a large concrete space. And that can be landscaped with a few trees and that sort of thing, similar down to in um, at MCG Park in Melbourne, they've got grass creek through the whole parkland setting for when there's big games on at the at the at the centre. Um, but when it's off season, you wouldn't know otherwise that it's um, got a, a reinforcing in there as well. Um, yeah, does that make sense for circulation? What sort of car spacing do you, in terms of numbers, figures? What, yeah. what are you proposing? Because to me, uh, there's. 20 lines there, which equates to about 10 cars down one side and 10 up the other side. Yep. Um, I can't see you fitting that amount of cars in that particular space. Yep. So, so without expanding it even more. Yep. What we're looking at at the, we, we want to keep the same amount of car parking that's here. So I think at the moment there's an allowance for 105. That's including all this space as well. Um, Tom at Council did the count a few weeks back. So what we're accommodating for is for during summer season that there could be approximately about 50 car spots up in this main area, but then with this space as well, that could uh, improve it to be up at about 100, 100 mark or so. So we would be losing car parks as such here, but then down at Scrubbers End, that we would be increasing the parking numbers that are down that space as well. So what we wanted to do up in this town centre was not have it as car focused for parking for overnighters. So we just really wanted to be the day people that come in, have all their amenities around them, can use the bus to get down or be able to walk down to the other end. Um, yeah, but we've all got to make sure that all the numbers are, are correct. We don't want to lose, be losing parking because that's yeah, mm. against yeah. the agenda. No worries. Yeah. I've just I've got a couple of things. Um, the grass creek on the sounds really good, but um, there's been an investigation of how that works in the sun, in the safe area and all that sort of stuff, that's something that probably needs to be... Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 And the, the other thing is the bus space that you've allowed there, we've also got a winter bus that sort of runs separately from the, from the, the bus that you're talking about, you're thinking that that bus spot will be just one bus stop for all buses. Yeah. I, and whether or not that will be enough or because there's a couple of different spots. Yes. Now. Absolutely. Mm. So we we're looking, it would be great if there could be two buses that could fit along there. But we're also looking at drop off and pick up points with inside this one as well. So if it's a, a smaller um, a smaller business a shuttle bus or something like that that you could use to drop off and pick up um, people within that network as well. Um, also, Robin, there was a suggestion we could. Um, so where that blue line is, you see on the main road, opposite on the opposite side, we could duplicate that spot. Sure. Going in, going out. Yeah. 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 That's the thing is, though, the bus doesn't pick up people along. The bus picks up to just go to Hoffman. Yeah. It's not a bus you can get on to go around the village. Yeah. And and the other bus that comes from only other goes over the top. That's the same. It only comes into the forecourt, picks up and leaves. So there isn't a bus service throughout the village. Unless it's picking up those dots and heading straight in. Right, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You would need to make it for at least two, two buses. large coach size mm -hmm. buses. Okay. Uh, yep. Keep in mind for the 
the uh, school, bus, school, bus, school, bus, school bus that comes from the I think so as well too. Mm -hmm. Tom, Tom made the point that um, the, like the public bus that's accessible to everyone would always have precedence over like if there was private coaches and things coming in, but that, but that yeah, we could look at provision for private coaches yeah. and things that might come in on occasion, yeah. but the public buses would have precedence over them. Yeah. And I think as well, by putting one on that side as well, it's still within the, like you still feel like you've landed in this town as well, or that you're still in, near, near things as well, so it's easy, accessible around. You're not keen on doing the one-way during the summer, one-way road. I understand during winter, but not summer. I don't think it's required. Well, how so? Just with the use, or I just don't think it's required during the summer to have one way from the roundabout currently yeah. to Scrubbers End. Yeah. What about winter? Yes, but not not this time of year. What about for just continuity of use, though, for people that come out? Um, I'm just going to learn to read the signs. <laughs> I think where where people go. Yeah. Not yeah, well, they know the road keep left always. Yeah. So one of the benefits we saw in that section becoming one way was you can then increase the pedestrian space. So it's a, a lot more walker friendly yeah, between definitely. the two precincts. Whereas at the moment, if you have to maintain two way, then you've got two, three point three metre wide lanes that you need to maintain. Just a consideration of one way though is that um, if it is one way. It is quite a long way to go all the way around again. If yeah. you miss the first stop, the first the first stop. Okay. if you miss first that house. stop, you have to go. So it's not. It's not like just about going around a oh, straight street a block. Yeah. You actually have to go around the entire village yeah. to get back into where. So I think that needs to be considered. Whether yeah. that's yeah. Yeah. in winter, I don't think there's much choice because it's, it's so crazy. But, but it's not busy enough in summer. in summer. It's not like there's pedestrians all over the place, and they're going to Easter when the place is chock full. Yeah, it's have not an issue. Street cricket yeah. in the middle of summer. Um, it's not an issue when Easter is the busiest time. Yeah. It's just not an issue. Okay. Yeah. But it is in winter. Yeah. yeah. I've got drawings of the big muster as the next one, so we'll go through that in a bit more detail. Robin, just, just sorry, um, if we move off circulation, on the northwest side of. Um, Horseshoe, the the round the roundabout mm -hmm. that exists, was consideration, or have you thought about? Um, is there a reason for two way traffic in that section, or this would one? you? Yeah, or would you just have it still operating like a roundabout in one way? Is there a need to be able to go? We're thinking for all the residents that are down this way, okay, oh, rather than having to drive all the way around. Yeah. Um, but it was. Yeah, easier access for people that live there and also for access to these businesses as well. Because you're not making the bottom section a road. No, it is still. You can still drive through, but it's only one way. It's predominantly it's, it's one way, it's more so for just getting people into parking. Yeah, so, well, then I'm thinking why would you have two ways yeah. on the outside? It's not just just leave it around it's around the road. It's at the equidistant. So if you're coming yeah. in from your yeah. intersection, which I get, Yep. And you're coming down and around and you head out that side. Yeah, to the west. Why well, yeah, well, would you need mm -hmm. the same road again around the other side going you know, to the same place? Yeah. That'd be confusing if anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just keep it as a clockwise roundabout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, I think Tom gave the comment around that was that we're trying to make it much more pedestrian focused. Um, and so that one way side of the roundabout is a shared zone, it's not a road. And the other the two way is a road, and so this is your three way. We put but, in, but aren't you making pedestrian friendly by having the footpath in front of the cars when they're parked? Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah. So but, but, um, but then it so what it can do is, what I'm saying, like activates that center, like there's an opportunity there that, that the center of the roundabout becomes an activated space that can be used in the future for they don't have to cross a road as such to use this space for other events and you know, there's the fireworks that happen here at New Year's and that sort of thing so it's we're trying to just put something to happen within this space as well we're just trying to link that to this southern side of the site as well so it was about the problem the problem with the left hand side being two way yep. is they're still going to turn right mm -hmm. in your half one way roundabout mm -hmm. so well, you're still yeah. going to get Two oh, way. Yeah, they're going to turn right. They're still going to turn right from there mm -hmm. into that one way around about that's a shared space. Mm -hmm. They do it now anyway. Do you know what I mean? So it's, 
the concern for me personally when I'm standing in front of that pub is constantly there's so much fun play that goes on to that roundabout. It's awesome. When the car is parked the way that it is now, mm -hmm. those parents are in front of that car. Yes. Um, and those cars almost block the kids getting hit by another car. Yeah. Once you move those cars to the other side, it's a wonderful shared zone, but then it sort of needs to be stopped. Yeah. With It's the little ones now, it's getting quite active and it's getting, when there's a great snowfall, that roundabout is just fun. It's yeah. so much fun. Uh, like a little mini snow park. Yeah. Yeah. And you got little kids on little to all the toboggans that we all love so much, and they boom, you know, and oh, it's, right. it's, you just shoot yourself all the yeah. time. It's, you know, there's buses, there's cars, there's, yeah. and you're watching that mum going, I know it's your first time, but please don't be too far away from that. So it yeah. becomes very intense. Yeah. 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 In this one. Yeah. yeah. We did look at that as an option actually. We actually looked at removing that no, section altogether. No, I think totally. It's dead end. Yeah. Totally for parking. Because it's a lot of fun. They love it. Yes. And even in summer, we would do a while we took a pitch on the road about yeah, we go to, like, have little toddlers, you know, yeah. do their. Yeah. It's great, yeah. but it's still a road. It's a roundabout. So. Yeah. I suppose I wanted to move it away from being a roundabout just because a lot of people do find them being confusing, yeah. which is why we want to convert this into a T intersection basically by having this is your, more of your bigger movement. This is this is really slow paced. It's pretty much just people parked and pulling in and pulling out of the park. But the rest of it, this is a bit more activated and likewise with this section here. Yeah. No, I agree with you. It's just, like I said, they will turn right and they will. In theory, it sounds wonderful. Yeah. If you've ever been in here in the winter and you've seen people, they run over eggs. Yeah. So I need some sort of physical, physical barriers up there. Yeah. 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 So, well, yeah. Well, narrowing of that. Yeah. 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 So you can so get out. Just to stop the You just go. <laughs> I mean, so, it, so, you, you, you're right, but the whole thing's a problem. It's, it's dangerous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think if we could do traffic solutions that can sort of not allow people to maybe turn in here, so it's you have to do like a really that sharp turn to get around. Because I, I can tell you, they love it. They, they love that space. They'll put a car there and then pull out a picnic table next to yeah. the car yeah. on the road. And it's, um, it's, so it will work, what you're suggesting will suggest it will yeah. be wonderful, but it's got to stop, that you can't have yeah. them. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Now that I know that little kids use this space with their toboggan, they didn't know that that was happening. So Yeah, well they can't find the toboggan, right? <laughs> no, they can. <laughs> so. <laughs> it's for people to toboggan anyway. Yeah. So they've got nothing anyway. Mm -hmm. It won't matter if we had 20 toboggan runs the other day. Yeah. They will toboggan anywhere where there's a little yeah. bit of a slope. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Maybe. Is there any merit? Sorry, I'm not right. traffic control. Coming to the T intersection, turn right, go down, and make the entrance of the car parking there. So um, come in here? Yeah, and block it off the other end. Would that, look, would that help with the solution? Yeah, it's a good point. Rather than having them come yeah. at that section. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. I suppose that could work. What we're trying to do is two way. Yeah. Keep it as two way to the yes, two way there, and then the entry to the car park is down that way. Yeah. I think find, finding that might be difficult from that if you're a new visitor. Yeah, but it's definitely a good yeah suggestion. Just oh, some just some just some just some yeah, definitely. Yeah, some of the traffic engineers had it. Yeah, because what we wanted is the rest of the roundabouts, fences, and some kind of well, yeah, it's such a you know things. Um, hard yeah. objects for kids to run into. To not, yeah. Well, that's probably better than a moving vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> the the section, if you turn left, you're heading up Big Master to the yep. Gaza mm -hmm. Strip. If you turn right, you're going down and you've got the option to do long term parking if you go the other way. This way? No, no. If, if you turn right, no, at the, the, the top of the T, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that takes you to the other part of town or the, long, or the day parking. Yeah. It seems like a good idea. I'm just thinking you just have to cater for the buses which don't mm. come into the village, they just come here. Yeah. Turn around and go back. And that bus is a bit of a bus. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. that bus yeah. is yeah. just yeah. Yeah. going yeah. 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 But if you can do that some other way, if you can sort the buses out some other way. Yeah. 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 Y
Instead of the T in the section, we, and that way the buses can come in and go out. It turns into being a, a, a something around that size yeah. there as well. Yeah. We yeah we had that as a, one of our first iterations. We also had this road coming in and this one, so it was more so like you missed out on that section. So we've tried to look at different ways of just flatten around it and get rid of it. That's what I was going to say as well. Like it was clean and dry, not taking too much for thirty years. What? Mm. Yeah, not true. Just get rid of it. With the topography that's there in the middle of the round, yeah. from what I understand, yeah. it's just been the spoiled cut us, um, yeah. put it being left over from doing the road shots and that sort of thing. Yeah. What's with the ideas yeah. about removing some of that soil from the centre of the round yeah. to open up the sight lines yeah. across? You actually can't see down. You can't see yeah. us through them across the road. Probably about to be broken bricks and then place and all sorts of things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry for to interrupt because you came late. We are recording, so it oh. might just it <laughs> just show you where to. Um, but also, it might be difficult for the video to pick up if there's multiple yeah. conversations. Sorry. <laughs> but also, yeah. Um, yeah. So the same sketch again, but a bit more illustrative about what we're sort of thinking. That um, that it is this T intersection. That this is a shared zone, so the pedestrians can come across. That if this was an event space, that this building that we're in now could also be included in any sort of events and things that happen within that area. So it's really making this into um, into something else. Um, How do you just the two way there going down there? Yep. Are we expanding the road? Because there isn't enough room currently to have two way mm -hmm. on that road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there would be an expansion of some of that road space through there. So at the moment, where there's a um, there's a bit of planting. Works that are through there, we'll be looking at removing mm -hmm. some of that to, in, yeah, to improve it. Yeah, to push and it into the outside. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. push yeah. out into the outside of the road, not the into the road. Yeah, yeah. But do you plan to more stuff on the end of it and make it not playable? Also, an option. We've um, suggested so a few other tree plantings, but then to still try to keep open that view shed that's down that's been in all the master planning documents as well. It's amazing. View that it's down to the mountains, but I, I agree. Perhaps I think so. Show, um, and through the village green process, we still heard from the community that some sort of cleared, open kickabout space was still desired. And the village, the, sorry, the roundabout does feel like an obvious spot for it if it lost its undulations. So we could, you know, it is. It's quite a big green space, but it's sort of unusable. Mm -hmm. It is great for tobogganing because of its mm -hmm. slopes. But outside of that, it's an issue of safety, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 but outside of that, it's a, it's a great, yeah. great it's space. The problem. Yeah. We're going to continue to love that space, and, and I love it more so than anyone. My kids are straight on there, and, and I don't have to go all the way down um, for them to have a play. But we're going to keep saying it's a wonderful, awesome space until a child dies. How? Until a child dies. Dies how? On the road. <laughs> oh, for the road. Yeah. Yeah. So it's safety does definitely need to be. It's very, it's, it's a very big yeah. deal. Yeah. So. Just flatten it. Then that's just, yeah, so we said flatten it. Perhaps it should not be a play space. Yeah. If but we're not encouraging it necessarily to be a play space as such, but it's more so as that it is an open lawn area. So we remove that topography that's there and make it a leveled area. We could put some treatment that's around some area so it encourages people to be more so in the centre. Or as another option to a village open space area, we've also got this space up here that's near and where the playground is that um, at the moment what we're proposing is that it could be elements of like a mini pumps track or something like that as a learn to ride facility for smaller kids so that they can then access the the bigger the um, mountain bike trails throughout. Um, but there could be opportunity for that sort of thing to happen up in the air as well. So this also becomes a parkland setting. So it is more about planting trees and making it a picturesque view as you enter Dinner Plain. And this more is about an activated site as such. So on, the, on the current ground, the matters there. And if you remove the humps and bumps, mm -hmm. flatten it out, would you also be in the area putting some like, electrical reticulation? Through there, so it could be used for fairs and fates and all that, and mm. stores oh, and things. Like power bollards, and yeah, this is not out. 
Yeah. I think we would encourage, yeah, they, they do see it all up at this sort of space as yeah, well. It makes it more utilitarian. Yeah. Because yeah. one thing I could do as well um, was, hold on. I was looking at sectioning off part of the row. So we could almost section off this space if there was to be an event over time and have that all as a bigger, mm. bigger space all through there. So you've got hard stand as well as soft space that you could set up market stalls and those sorts yeah. of things there too. I mean, that's the future of the. Of the the green season up here. Definitely. Market stores and you know, car shows and all yeah. sorts of things. Yeah. That's the benefit actually of the northwest section having a two way. So if you do close that off for an event, that is still down there. Yeah, you can yeah. still park and get in there. So yeah. Yeah. it might be. Well, I think you can go and dig up any other area, you definitely have to look at putting the services there. So yeah. 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 Uh, and so also with the just the entrance elements, we're not sure what they are at the moment, but it's more so just that idea that there's it draws your eye into dinner planning for something that's here. Um, so that's being these sorts of these lines, which is lines of the page at the moment, but whatever they could be over time. Um, looking at the whether it's the stone or the, the beautiful timbers and those, those natural materials that are found up here. Years ago, we used to have what he's called Mr. Squiggle. Oh yeah, the little box. The little box, here. which is here. Yeah. So that was at the entrance and was moved. Yeah. Um, I thought that was great because people, visitors, drivers would go, oh, what's, what's that up ahead? Let's slow down and have a look. Yeah. We don't have anything like that anymore now. Yeah. So was Whether it a big some pattern? Was it a gatehouse or something? Was that no, one? It was, it was just a void. It was just a, okay. Yeah. yeah. Whether just we just have something like maybe a statue or something sticking with the high country theme. Of the Stockman's Hall of Fame, High Country Cameraman, yep. something like that, maybe to draw people in. Yep. You know, what's what's that up there? Let's have a look. Yeah. Stop and have a look, something like that. I think we can do something as well with just the significance of the landscape as well, by having like maybe showcasing some of the existing vegetation that's there or having that as a draw card and those materials as well, that we can still tell those stories within. But uh, yeah, I understand exactly what you mean of trying to have it as a draw card mm -hmm. element. Um we're also thinking about as a wayfinding element that could be used as some sort of a um, interpretation or sculptural element is all the um, the snow poles that are along the road. They're such an iconic thing and so relevant here, but there could be something that we could um, propose with those sorts of elements and it becomes a, a density of them that sort of kind of encourages um, people to think that something's happening as well as a as off the cuff idea. Um, yeah. Any other comments about the entrance area? No. It might be worth also mentioning just at um, Big Mustard Drive, so that corner there, the proposed to shift pedestrian traffic to the south side of the road. So at Castron's oh, corner, right. yeah. um, because it is so shaded, you know, in the winter and we have icy conditions there, mm -hmm. is to try and shift the predominant pedestrian movement. We wouldn't close off the footpath on the north side, but we would. Just encourage people to cross the road at that point and then work up the south side of the road yeah. in the in the sun, effectively, not in the shade. Yeah, yeah. that's right. So what about that one? And then also to the front of these buildings as well, we've proposed extending that out um, a little bit further. I know there's a level change throughout that space, but it just um, it's so tight to get around some of those the shop fronts that are there at the moment. There's you know only this much width in between where the plant raised planters are and the in the building. So about trying to improve that access throughout that space so it becomes much more pedestrian friendly from those cars coming in and from those businesses coming out as well. If you had heated paths, <laughs> that'd be great. Yeah. Well, that works. If the money extends that far. Yeah, you've done that. Were there heated paths before? No. Yeah, no, at the front of um, oh, cilantro. Yeah, but no, at the front of Castro Corner, that whole place was heated. Oh, I just cost millions of dollars a heat. Yeah, from mm -hmm. that pull Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Except the footpath in between the, those both buildings. That wasn't good. The shops and okay. the cilantro and the old Maloney's was. Uh, That's right. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Alright, so Big Mustard Drive East. So this is the section of road that we're looking at. So from um, main roundabout. Um, all the way down to Scrubbers End intersection down here. Um, apologies about that, we've got all the buildings on there. It's difficult to see them with all the tree cover on the area of the um, So I've tried to locate some of the lanes. I understand there's quite a few more since I've driven around again. There's another one that's in here and here. And, 
all the way around, but that's something that we'll work on as we further go further through the, the design. Um, so there's just key business frontages, um, big businesses fronting the street as well, then also just the residential. Um, and then it's trying to make this as a destination for people to head on down to Scrubbers End. So it would be from this point that it would become two-way again, so that um, from here you either have to turn into Halter Lane or you have to turn into Scrubbers End if you're coming up. So as a quick analysis, um, that this area here is uh, has a lot of activity, particularly during the winter season, that there's drop-off, pick-up, backlog of cars, bottleneck, pedestrians slipping on slippery surfaces, um, cars going the wrong way, supposed to go this way, um, that people are stopping when they shouldn't be stopping, or um, there's just a bit of confusion about what's actually happening there for, from tourists as well as um, locals' perspective as well. Um, there's just a lot of movement, particularly around the, um, the bigger businesses as well. Um, I know there's other parkings up on Tower Road, but that's, I think, council internal but council are working on that one at the moment. Um, then looking at sight lines from here, that um, but it's, like, it's a really nice drive heading down, but you just don't see that it's just a turn into Scrum's End, but there's all these other facilities that are down there, so it's just making that more um, legible that there's all these other facilities over there for people as well. Um, and that when you're here, you know, when you turn down this way, turn that way, um, yeah, just making it clearer for people. Um, but there's a the bus stop that's there as well, that's on that the bigger loop circuit. One thing about that bottom bit of corner in winter though is that it's quite steep and it gets quite um, icy, and that's where people are not looking for scrubbers with it because they're conscious of what's going on in the car or a kid might walk out or something might happen. It's not yeah. really a safe, it's not the safest bit of road no. yeah. in the village in the winter. Because it's steep. Yeah. yeah. And it just increases getting steep turning into scrubbers end as mm. well. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. you have that cross intersection right at that point as well, mm. I suppose people. Yeah, it's, it's um, yeah. not, not an easy intersection. Well, yeah, the bollards. And then the, yeah, the bollards are keeping people out, which is fine. And then this year it was just like this fine snow. So you can't see what's coming from hot to money yeah. around either. So it, it, it's a fairly nerve wracking intersection yeah. uh, at times. Yeah. Not all the time, but at. Yeah, no, I agree. That's, yeah, and I've only seen it really in summertime or at the end of snow season, so I can see that it gets tricky. Um, Definitely. There's not much we can do about the topography, about the how the road works, but we can look at ways of making it safer for, for both cars and people. Would you like that intersection, or could you make a small roundabout out of it? Pretty. <laughs> That's what I've done. It'd be hard because of the buses, I suppose, too, and the trucks so, that go through town, the, co the coaches. You see, you've yeah, got to think of all those. Yeah. The, um, you make it a low one. The, yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the gas tank that comes through, yeah, the gas tank um, they have to have a certain amount to go around, which is why they yep. don't come through Big Mustard Drive anymore. They go, they go around, around Hotland and straight over so because there's not. less manoeuvre. Yeah. Mm. So the, what we've proposed is putting in a small roundabout that's there, but it would be a mountable something. Fully trafficable. Fully trafficable. Yep. So the garbage truck, the gas truck, the, the buses, whatever it needs to be, can access it and that sort of thing as well. Mm. But then so it doesn't come from the mountain in winter because it will get full of snow. Yeah, it's probably not. It would have to be clear right back yeah, on the yeah, top. Yeah, it would be clear yeah. on the top of it. Yeah. Uh, what sort of material would it make? Yeah. <laughs> it would just be concrete. <laughs> just a yeah. yeah. But then Gary yeah, would want to concrete to snowfall. Yeah, it's not much about. It's, it's a low profile. So you just, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we can talk to our traffic engineers and Gary about that as well. So what profiles are well suited to that sort of thing and to. It needs to be suitable for snow clearing because that's the number one priority for it as well. Um, but there's other traffic solutions that we could just look at for that as well. well. As far as my understanding, the original concept was a lot of trucks would go around the back, the, around the back of the Alpine School. Uh, and yeah, there was this is road. Yeah, the proposed road. The proposed road. Has yes. there been any thought put back into that? Uh, no. Not specifically, but we can, I mean, we can touch on that when we go to the Scrubbers in precinct because we have considered that. Yeah, um, that and I think it's important that we don't, whatever we do down there doesn't preclude that happening in the future because mm -hmm. we do see that's a good service access in and out. Well, yeah. could be another way to move down Scrubbers in. Yeah. Yeah. 
negotiate through town. town. Yeah. And the other consideration is if the CFA does get moved, what, what planning has been scoped out for that little area there in terms of car parking or mm. what? Oh, oh for where the existing where the existing CFAs? Yeah. What, what, what sort the of. The end of town road there up around there. Mm. Yep. That's a good question. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. So just on this one, what we've proposed is having it all as one way, so the big red is one way circuit that comes down to Scrubbers End to really make that as a, a shared zone that can link through. So by having a shared zone, as rough sketches here saying that at the moment we've got about 6.2 metre width, that's curve to curve. Um, if we make it a one way section, we have a roughly a three metre road width, which will be enough for it to accommodate a, a, the garbage truck or service vehicles. But then also having a two metre wide path, that's good for shared path networks, so people can go both ways on that. Um, and then also opportunity for other vegetation, those sorts of things as well. That's proposal A. Or proposal B, that we could have at some sections space for um, parallel parking along the road as well for more short stay. So drop off and pick up elements or two hour parking or day parking. So you still have three metre one way, 2.3 metres or so parking and then another two metre path. That fits into a little bit of the existing verge, but there's, uh, I think there should be enough space there to pitch that at those key locations if needed. Um, so when we're looking at um, the pedestrian side, as Francine was saying, we're trying to keep it to the south side, so it's more on the sunnier side, particularly in, in um, winter time. So then we've got direct access to these businesses as well, and then linking back over to um, the town centre. Um, yeah, pedestrian access all the way down, and then at this small proposed roundabout element of having pedestrian crossing points at, at each location that can then direct people down towards Scrubbers End, but then also over to that bus stop location as well. Um, and then for parking elements, um, the parking areas where we're thinking to investigate further would be in the front of these businesses and um, buildings here, and in the front of where the Ramada is at the Hotel Plains, and then possibly other areas around, but it just needs to be investigated a bit further for what's existing in those sort of areas. But at the moment, it's looking at like maybe four parking bays and maybe five or six for that sort of area. So it's not a lot of extra parking, but it's just it's, what we're trying to do is to assist in the drop and pick up for the, these businesses here. So it is a 30 minute pick up where you can go and get your skis and your high gear and that sort of thing and then continue on your way. Then you can just park your car for your holiday and then you don't to jump in the car again. I think of the car parking in the front of those businesses by our actual car parks for the building. Buildings. Um, are they oh, you're talking about the angle parking that exist there? Sure the on the, yeah, so the first few businesses, not yeah. the shop on the corner, but the next business up, yeah. did a planning promotion and the next one there, the actual car parks there are on the road and they are the car parks for those buildings and accommodation. Right. Yeah, angle parking. 90 degree. Yeah. Yeah, you, you drive straight into it. Yes, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So you so couldn't make extra car parking there because it's already yeah, car yeah. parking for for those businesses. Yeah. Yep. So we can we we'll look at where we can fit something in along the stretch of road. It's also what I'm saying is I haven't figured out exactly where they would go along there, but just saying that we want to try to encourage parallel parking along uh, Big Mustard Drive where possible, mm -hmm. just to try to have that drop off pickup element. Um, sort of activity that can happen all the way. But it is already on the other side of the road. The on the side? Yeah, it's already there. Yeah. Is that where Hoyts? From Hoyts up to the road. It, it From goes in. Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's there's a, a drop. Like a lot. Mm. There's a drop in spot there that's already dug out. So it's yeah. Right, okay. I thought, so people park in there 90 degree? No, 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 no parallel. No, they're just parallel in there. Okay. Into the bike. No, 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 so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be this and so you know, you can try a little bit one way. Yeah, I mean, people can be trained, but probably the sign 
Det er jo ikke noget, men jeg tror, det er bare to år. Men det er der altså. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And the kids are like, oh no, we don't want too many signs. Well, you have to, because it clearly doesn't work yeah. with minimal signs. Yeah. And yeah. the side, the street signs that are existing at the moment as well, there's really low ones that get covered in snow mm-hmm. as well. So it's about looking at what, like lifting them up, making them a bit more clear as well, so people know where they're But going. You, you just have to have lots. A lot more snobs, but saying one way, wrong way, go back, or one way, or one. And yeah. it's too late when they're at the corner here, and then you go, look, I'm sorry, you can't get them straight the right way. They just laugh at you, they keep going. Yeah. We do need some of the pedestrians down there, though, to be less in the road, down in the Yeah, because at the moment they're walking the road. So yeah, the proposal of the pedestrian footpath down there in winter, um, is it going to be clear? Yeah. Yes, this, yeah. so that's the idea that it would be next to the road so it's easy for them to clear. We'd have to have something as a vertical marker or something just to delineate that it's pedestrian space to car space, whether that's... So, so there'd be a separate clearing machine to clear the footpaths? Well, that's uh, so, it's something that so, will need to be investigated. Yeah, so that's, it's, yeah. I know it's a tricky thing. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So you, yeah. you, we talk about a whole another lot of clearing that needs to be done. We don't do footpath clearing. Yeah. Right now, it's done. No, no. That's right. It'll be that same so, block. You oh, actually need problems. to do pull in parallel parking on alternate sides because you couldn't do it all the way up one side because you're blocking people. Yeah. You have a drop-off point, I want to take my car out because I live there, mm-hmm. and there's someone blocking me in because, mm-hmm. well, that's the drop-in point. Yeah. So you would have to do it on different sides. Alternate yeah. as to where the uh, where people are. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. We wouldn't mm-hmm. want to be blocking any drop-off no, points. Like, yeah, no, I guess that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Be able to remove. No, don't do that. It might with the the path versus road. It might just have to be a rollover curve that differentiates road surface from uh, or even uh, still with a snow curve. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. you've got the rollover curve. Well, you have to talk to Gary about yeah. 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 So anything which is not flat. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. okay. Problem. Just not <laughs> really about you know. Unless, don't have speed ups. unless you've got a separate operation which does mm-hmm. does for path snow clearing, which is maybe where we have to go. Because it's, it's, a, it's the, another expense, I guess. Yeah, but there are no footpaths already, but there's a clear reason is that we need footpaths here. That could be an investment that Council and Ward didn't make yeah, or whatever exactly. needs to go down. So we've got, yeah, so we have pathways and they're safe for that way. Like, yeah. Have there ever been any pedestrian casualties, fatalities, or anything? I mean, like only ones that fall over themselves. <laughs> <laughs> so, literally, for other <laughs> reasons. <laughs> such a big issue, like it's desirable. Mm, yeah. No, be necessary. Mm. Do you see it acting as a a shared zone naturally, the way it is at the moment? So mm. because people do walk along the road. Yeah. 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 Wow. yeah. It is. Yeah. 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 Maybe just signs indicating because people do park their head where they park their car. But maybe having some signs indicating this is a bigger shared zone. Mm. Please give way to cars or cyclists, cyclists or something like that because quite often I'll, I'll be driving down uh, down this area people are just wandering four across yeah yeah just like looking at it like <laughs> <laughs> I just think the more for walking you know yeah. but I think because I'm just because it's not busy either so, yeah. so you know you just I mean I'm doing yeah. that I just wander around and it's just never busy and a car comes here oh hang on yeah, yeah. 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 It's yeah, yeah. Yeah. just the country as well, like you do just walk. Yeah, walk. If it was busy, 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 to the Millicard race. Yeah, we just had that in the app a few weeks ago. Um, they build up a bit of speed, that's happening. They certainly do. So the idea of having a shared path or shared system, we're not so sure on, or, well, it sounds like it operates like that already. Yeah. 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 Because there's no so footpaths. So to walk on these little ones is rocks. Yeah. There's mm-hmm. depressions, it's actually down to mm-hmm. Spreading your ankle and stuff, so the road's the only sure, consistent surface. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And some people don't know that there is a strong grass, and yeah. the road's the way to go. Mm. 
and there's rocks to stop people from parking on people's uh, properties. Yeah. And, um, mm -hmm. It's an obstacle course if you're not overnight. You can end up with two cars in your front yard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Before we'll look at this one in more detail. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, before the next iteration. Yeah. Given all that feedback. It works with the, the speed being down, but just, I think, just clear of signage. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that the bus can't come through, that, that's helped. When the bus used to come through, it was even worse. Yeah. But it doesn't. So that, yeah. that made a big difference. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's just that drawing again. Um, okay, so looking at Scrubbers End, um, so existing conditions at the moment, we've got up to day parking, overnight parking, the, um, the hut that's here, the, the ski lift, the ski run, the tube run, um, and then the toboggan right over the side. Um, the depot uh, area, this is a Gippsland water facility that's here, um, uh, the Blizzard Brewery that's down this way, and then the gas tanks that's here as well. This one is sort of the, the trail connection as well. Um, there's also an informal track that links over that isn't very clear coming over to where the Very informal. Mm -hmm. Very informal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> from the trail. So, um, sketching analysis. Um, so, I'm also looking at when you enter the view line, you pretty much just see this sea of asphalt and concrete. Um, so it's because you're elevated quite a lot and things are quite lower, but it's um, yeah, it's quite dominant as you enter the site. It's clear in that sense is that you know you can park somewhere, but from a, um, a visual amenity point of view, it's something that we could look at improving as well. Um, so yeah, day parking through here, overnight parking. Um, that you can see directly over to the gas tanks, um, which I find are a bit of an obstruction. It'd be nice to screen them somewhat, whether it's with vegetation or timber screening or something through there. Um, but there's also opportunity for at the existing hut to um, improve the facilities that are there, so to increase what, um, the amenity facilities that's there. Um, the RV dump point is on this side, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which apparently has a best sign in all of Dinner Plain too, so we've got to combat that with our signs. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so looking at the end of the ski run, that it's actually a great view looking back up. It's quite amazing that you get to see that view of the tree lined area that kind of encapsulates it all there. Um, but looking at that from a safety perspective as well, of how we can catch those skiers so they don't shoot off down to the road. Um, and so also the same sort of thing at the end of the development run, that it is that amazing view line back up to the Alpine School. Um, but then, um, yeah, making sure that they don't go over the edge. Looking at pedestrian connections from this hut all the way through to this facility. Um, at the moment it's a long distance, so we've got lilies that need to go to the bathroom. It's rare that you probably make it back there. So looking at what we could do with amenities at that end as well and whether people are supportive of that also. Um, then also looking at when you're in the car and you're driving down here that you see that it's kind of feels like it's the end of it's the end of the whole town from here. Um, it's changing material from this point, the concrete sort of ends about there. Um, so you feel like you should just turn back around and go back up. Um, so it's about making the signage at this point um, yeah, or either delineating the space that there's um, activity happening down here, so the brewery and whatever else would continue down there in future times. Um, but also looking at, uh, it's for further investigation, but about continuing pedestrian uh, vehicle movement down into potential overnight stay down in the depot area as well. So that's something that needs to be investigated much further with more consultation. There was so, talk about um, enclosing that industrial estate, that's right. and only certain um, community people would have access to that. So. Yeah, so that could be an option that we looked at. But that was in one of the plans. <laughs> yeah, not that long ago. So it's screening it, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so it's screening it potentially even from up here, um, and then it's under the lock and key, so if you need to come and get your car, you just give someone a call, and they come and open it up, and you can go down and get it, and get on out of here as well. So it's, it's options like that that we can look at, but it's whether the screen is here or whether it's 
here so we can have access to continue up for that access track for the fire vehicles and other future possibilities of the gas tanker or something like that through that um, access track as well. So it's about where that sort of screening or fencing off that sort of depot space could be. Because um, you've also got your know, links to all the mountain bike trails from this point as well, which is kind of hidden. So it's about trying to connect that point up with all this other activity, um, sport activity that's happening throughout the rest of the site too. Well, what, what, what is the objective of how many cars are you trying to uh, find space? Like, is there a number? Have you got a number planned? Don't have a magic number, no. Um, we're trying to increase capacity of these facilities at the moment. They're, um, they're not to their maximum capacity because I think people park 90 degrees one way and then parallel the other. But um, if we encroach on the, the verge, I suppose, or on here another metre or so, we should be able to fit in two 90 degree parking bays, which would increase the parking numbers. So by just looking at small gestures that we could do, we could increase that those parking numbers. We should also point out, uh, so Tom, who Robin was referring to, is um, Tom Cordes. He's now manager of building and amenity, <laughs> but he's actually a transport planner. So he's done a lot of work looking at dinner plane for us and prepared mm -hmm. a dinner plane cover plan, yeah. effectively. And he's looking at sort of three aspects. I think the infrastructure we've got, also the permit system that's in place. Um, and there was something else, signage, I think. Yes, yeah, signage. signage. Yeah. So there's going to be um, the, a newsletter coming out soon for dinner plane this week, actually, and it, that'll include more detail on what's proposed as part of parking improvements well ahead of any of these infrastructure works. So we want to implement, I think, a new permit system this coming yeah, winter season. Yeah, that's what you Yeah. yeah. Um, and so when we talk about sort of long-term parking down at the depot, that's more looking at the businesses that attract a lot of staff that need staff. Uh, yeah, yeah. correct. We're not, we're not talking about visitors coming in, mm, no. putting their cars down in there. It's more, so yeah, how do we call it? Long term. Long term. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I suppose it's important that you all know that that's happening as well at the sort of the same time. So, yeah. So, he's looking at parking up the Tower Road and along other sorts yeah. of sections of where we can squeeze in other parallel bays for other day parking and that sort of thing, too. So. Yeah, the other, the, the other problem though is, um, is when it snows and people come down, they've got no idea where the car parks are, so they just park. Yeah. And so you lose, you could lose too many spots on a, on a heavy snow day. Yeah. Because yeah. people, they don't, they, don't, they, don't, they don't, and they don't care, they just pull in and off they go. And it then becomes the same with the overnight or the long term car parking is that. If there's quite a few cars in there and then it snows and then someone gets out and then there's snow just left, it makes it hard for the guys to clear it so you'll lose your car spots as well. Yeah. So that's half the reason we lose a lot of spots is that yeah. the snow has that effect on it, which, yeah. you know. Yep. Mm. So I know Tom's been also liaising with Mandy and Karen. Yeah. 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 yeah, quite closely about those issues as yeah. well. So. I'm going to meet with them as well, try to discuss it with them about ways to... It's hard for them to, and to, to get around people. I imagine yeah. it's a tough gig. Yeah. <laughs> What's the status of the, the roads in front of Trevor Chick's place? Which is Trevor Chick's place? Oh, he's down the edge. Well, right down the edge. Yeah, go to the left. Yeah, go to the left. Yeah, go to the left. Yeah. So is there any land south of there where the roads have peters out? Yeah. But the road stops pretty yeah, much there. Yeah, that stops yeah. there. Yeah. That goes into the, the marsh area. Good little side reading. Cool, so our first attempt at circulation of first represent um, is really about uh, converting both of these car parking areas by pinching a bit of space and just reorganising it. Delineation of those car parking bays is going to be a challenge, but it's something that we'll investigate. Um, by converting them into 293 parkings, you we maximise, I don't know the numbers exactly, but we're increasing the numbers is, um, the best we can. Um, so uh, day parking and overnight parking. I understand at the moment that few people use this area for overnight parking as well. So again, it's about having a really clear signage mm -hmm. thing. You can't do that here. Yeah. had some people on the uh, ski run the other day, last week. Yeah, yeah can, can. I saw that. Cheeky yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. No idea. Glass was soft. <laughs> <laughs> um, so other parking that we're looking at is 
um, 90 degree parking just off Scrubbers End Road. So we could possibly squeeze in a few in there. And then also at the front of the, the buildings through here, but we can also squeeze in a few more throughout that space. And that sort of um, provides um, direct car parking for to, to Bogren Run and also for the ski run. So, and the brewery. And the brewery, so that's also a good call. Um, but it's about having the pedestrian connections then from those parking bays, making sure that it is safe enough to get across um, from those two points. Um, so about improving amenity, that's at the hub that's there. So um, I think at the moment there's only a few toilet bays, but we could look at two, 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 but we could even look at increasing them for another two bays or something like that. Um, the idea of showers has been thrown up as well. For RVs. For RVs. Yeah, because they use this is a parking area. Yeah. <laughs> People are supporting that. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So you can just <laughs> not real good for our business, are they? The cameras. Some of them do go to the restaurant. Yeah, yeah. They'll go to the brewery. Yeah. So you, you might as well make it a little bit comfortable. That's right. Well, I guess it so we just got to have a good path network to get them back there. Um, well, I was just speaking of that, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm not an advocate of marks, but why not a connection from Scrubbers End down to the brewery, pedestrian wise, Scrubbers End, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. which yeah. Scrubbers at the moment is a moment track. Was that private mm -hmm. land through there? The, yeah, I think there is some private land. I think yeah. there's also some council. Is there any easement yeah. possibility? I can look into it for sure. I thought it was really um Because everyone that's everyone does it that way. Yeah. Okay. In the snow and in the yeah. green season. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that corner one with the car parking, you're just cancelling that in? I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure that's council land. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. that was supposed to be set aside for the service station. Well it was set aside yeah. okay. like twelve years ago, thirteen years ago. Um, so for pedestrian connections, what we're looking at is really trying to connect people from this point all the way over to this point. Um, this is where the pedestrian snow clearing system would come in handy as well, or um, grooming system. So we have a path that can come along here that's off the road, and then also this path that's off the road as well to connect up, but also linking into the existing car parking area, or the proposed car parking area here, all the way up to the toboggan run too. Um, so these roads here are shown as dashed because it's for investigation and discussion with, um, with Mandy and Gary. Um, but about that access track that goes up, so what could potentially happen with that in the future, or also access down to the long-term staff parking bay or long-term parking as well, and then what system that sort of needs to be throughout that space. Shelley, as a guest of the long-term staff car parks, do you think in Jersey? Would there be 20? Oh, how many available? No, no, how many would be needed if there was a... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Not often, just in a park. Just in a park, yeah. 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 Okay. And then we park for the whole season. That's what mm -hmm. they yep. yep. Okay. Yeah, it was just to make it just good to quantify. Yeah, no, absolutely, numbers always help. Yeah. Um, one of the things we're looking at as well down at the Boggan Run area was the option of relocating the hut that's at the base of the tube run over here and um, retrofitting that to be potential public toilet. So whether it's just one or two bays, but to assist in the amenity for this end of town so people will stay there for longer than their one or two hour play but they can stay there for the day or so as well um, as an option um, and making that a bit more of a draw card so that when people are coming through here that they see that there's something of an activity that's happening there it's almost like you need to see something to want to go to it as well so just having that as a um, you know, you can see the landmark um, there's a lot of trees through there though. There is a lot of trees. So we have sight lines making sure that right. we, whatever we do, we can see. We don't want to be clearing or anything like that, so, yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> um, So at the base of both of the mound, or both of the areas we're looking at um, doing mounding, which also acts as like a good viewing location as well, whether that's in green season or snow season, that 
can actually sit up there and look back up or um, catch on people coming down the hill as well. Um, look up any sort of fencing or something like this. Some of the the spur. Yeah. No, it's just going to get me in. So I just got a big mini down here. <laughs> yeah, trampoline to bounce back up. Yeah, because I yeah. did that. Yeah. Mean, the ones that are going to need are the ones that are out of control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, now I'm going to need to meddle. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Something that we'll look into for sure. And that's another case, you have a mound, you get snow, you get people doing yeah, the Yeah, you get the toboggans on that mm. end as well. And snowboarders thinking it's, yeah. Mm. Awesome fun. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Mm. 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 Yeah. 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 We want to have um, improved vegetational advantage just to try to screen it somewhat and try to improve that drive down or approach the point of, point of entry into the scrubbers end. Um, but we could have all the parking bay through there. But it's also about connecting the pedestrians coming down as well. At the moment, I understand that it's just one of the slippery paths that come down there, it's quite steep. So we could look at having some sort of a um, broad handrail or something that people could use to. Yeah, guide them down there, which could also be used as a delineation of where that path is too. Sorry to yeah. interrupt. Yeah. With the greenery and that, it gets back to what Sherry was saying before. With snowflow mm -hmm. in the in the in the winter, yeah. with vegetation there, it's just going to pile up, pile up, and make the space even yeah. smaller. Yeah, um, you've got to have access to. Remove the snow, even in those bays area. Mm -hmm. Even if you push snow out, you've got to get it somewhere. You've got to get it out. Well, Gary's yeah. going to be able to push it and, put, put it somewhere. and leave it somewhere. Yeah, sure. You won't pick it up in a bucket and, and put it in a tip truck. Yeah. And just push it to the side. So there's trees in the trees. It's just built yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. So it, it is a bit of a case where. In the summer, of course, it does look like a concrete jungle. You have to have clear access. So, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the, the safety side of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe we. Bring up Japan and get some summer trees, just put them in the ground. In the, yeah. <laughs> in the concrete. <laughs> <laughs> what if he's got somewhere to dump the snow on? Yeah, if he's got somewhere to dump it, somewhere to push it off, yeah. we should be able to get around it as well. But if you encumbered with vegetation, mm -hmm. the vegetation is just going to be destroyed. Yep. yep. Good point, though. I'll yeah, make sure. And, I mean, yeah, the machinery is pretty big, so when you move, so it's not like you can just zip back and go, oh, no, I'll just leave that over there and that. You really need to be pushing it to a side um, and then keep going. So it's, yeah, it's not that easy. Yep. Mm. Okay. The other thing I was thinking of, if you're looking at making a platform, a viewing platform so you can look back up the hill, mm -hmm. we're in uh, need of stage facilities and, you know, for screening, for yeah. food fest and all that type of thing. So whether that can be incorporated. Definitely. Into That's what we're thinking that it could one it could form some sort of an amphitheater type of yeah. it's like a slope coming down and then it could be more of a steeper slope that people could sit some on. Some sort of demand of stuff in the mm. in the summer. Yep, definitely. Viewing platform in the winter time. Yeah. I think that it could be really cool to, to activate this area as well in some time too. Like even if it is just one of the locations. Um, yeah. Good point, I've got to raise that one. Thank you. Um, the, the other thing that always attracted Dinner Plain to our family were there was always a fireplace, an open fireplace, so maybe that can be a consideration on this end of town. Sure. Where there is, you know, you drive past, see a lot of fire, you go, oh, that looks pretty cool, you yeah. know, and in we, in we go, and that's how, sort of how we used to find Dinner Plain yeah, right. 30 years ago. So whether that can be incorporated down there as well as a bit of gathering point, because a lot of people picnic there in the summer, in the winter time, they yeah. just... It does have a fire pit then. It does have a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's yeah. made it more yeah. accessible, yeah. But more sort of viewing time. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it kind of feels a bit private. At the it moment. is, yeah. 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 Flatten them out of So at this yeah. location... <laughs> Did you mean at this location or up here? Both, both, okay. yeah. Even if they, you know, Old style. No. Bonfire. Yeah, well, yeah, that'd be my style, but um, uh, old sort of cabin style yeah. or um, rock, rock work. Yeah, absolutely. Like chimney things that resources. Yeah. 
the snow can be have you seen those massive ones somebody selling you support bunker on the side of the road? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Just individual ones that, yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. People supportive of that? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's all part of the emotional connection. Yes, it's that's right. Storytelling is part of the emotional connection. Yeah, that's exactly right. And it is about this family gathering area as well. Yeah. And you, you know, you're here with. Family destination, lots of that, yeah. Getting well, and also through sort of the offices, and it can be a community type asset. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. it. That's well. yeah. So, whereabouts would you put it down at the scrubber's end? At the toboggan end, or would you put it up maybe more at well, the ski end? Um, I mean, you've already got one in that area. If you're building toilets and you're going to open an area, why not have it in the toboggan to in the to to area? Well. Yeah. Yeah. So we're putting in amenities, we might as well make it into something. Yeah. Um, yeah. What do people think about a, a single toilet down at the toboggan slope? More time is not better. Well, yeah. so yeah. so if you're going to do it, do it. Do if you're if you're attracting kids to be there, you know, they can't run to the toilet. But yeah, you're thinking yeah. one um, disabled access one, you know, so it wouldn't make the change. Yeah, it's It's all done. It's all done. It's all done. Not yet. No. Yeah. 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 I think Paul's idea of the comment was good because, you know, in summertime there's Kicker Fest and there's other community and social activities. You know, any infrastructure, you know, earthworks and stuff have been made for one purpose mm. and they've been duplicated and utilised for another purpose. That makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. And particularly to go back to the roundabout up here, yeah, water and power on the road, bollards and stuff. So it's, it's not like cross ready to go. Well, exactly. Yeah, you're not running leads through trees and across the road and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's future proofing. That's right. And I mean, I, I had my mate draw up some stuff, a pattern style, um, like a barn type thing, but you could have it as a, a lunch area. You could have a fireplace in there, mm -hmm. or you could put a stage, or then we can incorporate markets. Yeah. Um, and have everyone down that area. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it'd be great. Because um, yeah. if you had a the flicker fest night or something you haven't done there, you'd want to have a few market stalls or something. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that could be all undercover. Yeah. It'd be just something, you know, just a simple link to or something. Uh, yeah. Well, not. Uh, it's got to be oh, reasonably complex yeah. because of the snowflake, but yeah. um, you could have a rockwork fireplace down the end, and then you could have pushing. Um, Bench seating. Bench seating and tabling, so the picnic is, you know, the day to bog the people that yep. bring in their own whiskey and their own food and mm -hmm. yep. they can sit in there and yep. throw their litter. And so would you prefer yeah. that sort of thing to be, because like, that sounds like you're quite a big element down um, in that, well, I'm in that end, or even up in this? Well, no, in between, if you're going to have an, an open access to indicate that to bog in why not put it somewhere in between? In the middle. Yeah, I don't know. And that way you've got access to well, both sides. Oh, the brewery, both sides. So yeah. you have one kid on the slope with skis and the other guy. Yeah, the top. Top. yeah. I'd be more inclined to put it at either one of them, just so that it's it is seen as a clear destination. Mm -hmm. So that if you are having a big market night that you've got a density of activity that's happening there. It always seems better when there's well, everything happening in one spot. Well, that's probably on the left and left because of the car parking facility. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, okay. yep. Yeah. It feels like that should be your primary destination in this area and the, the toboggan is secondary. Um, we, we have shown these plans also to Mount Hopkins Ski Company who operate that facility and they said there's a lack of undercover shelter in that area anyway. So mm -hmm. if we can... No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a lack of so we can certainly build on that structure and then that area there. Yeah. yeah. If it'll make it a nice destination to sort of be out there as well. Not sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. But would you also have it up this, have maybe one down as well as one up, up here and in up in this precinct as well? You should have a DP hut. You've got sort of the DP hut area. Mm. Well, that, that one was done with the imaging from that DP, yeah. this area here. Yeah. I think that that needs to be focused on if you want to go back to that um, village centre. Mm. But it certainly feels like this is this is your hive of activity sort of yeah, space. Yeah, yeah. well that, that's where this imaging yeah. was made, was in that area there. It was uh, yeah. in front of the uh, kiddies uh, playground. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Speaking of activity, um, we had a community get together on the weekend up here and there was mention about a skate park, a permanent skate park up here. Right. Perhaps in that activity. Yeah. And now we've got the the um, oh, years, we've never got it. <laughs> we've got the, the one that we call it, yeah. pump track. Yeah. But more of a permanent one. Yeah, okay. Just thinking, well, most little small country towns have got one, so mm -hmm. what can't yeah. we? Yeah. We do have a lot of kids up here that are teenagers. Yeah. Um, one thing that we could look at is having like skatable elements, so rather than it being a skate park, that it could be an area that you know the kids can skate or scooter on and that sort of thing, but can still be used as a as a good gathering area as well. So it's not a huge concrete mass area or the terrain and that sort of thing, but it um, could be incorporated into the broader landscape as well as an option. Yeah. Um, so I'm just rubbing on. Um, it's three thirty. So I'm just also aware that people might need to go. <laughs> We've taken a bit longer than we probably anticipated. Yeah. Um, so if you do need to go, please just go. Um, I don't think there's too many more slides. No, it's really just the images. Yeah. 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 Um, so this is just more about uh, just preset images with the type of setting and styles that we're thinking would be appropriate for here. So thinking about the interpretation and entry treatment that, you know, beautiful um, granite rocks and those sorts of things up here, trying to utilise that in some sort of a way of, as an entrance element, um, or whether they're dry stone walling or more as a sculptural thing or, or as um, heritage timber fences and that sort of thing, trying to incorporate that into um, an entry treatment, not just that it looks like a, um, a development area, but that it looks like something to draw people in. Um, so looking at interpretive wayfinding elements. So um, key principles for it to be clearly visible, appropriate to site locations, durability, um, colour coding perhaps, that has to be above the snow line, um, at pedestrian scale as well as vehicle scale. Um, and also one of the design things we're looking at is about potential light shadow play that we could do on, um, so if it was something that was cut out, then the reflection could be onto the snow or the surrounding landscape as well. So these are just recent images from other projects from around Australia in more of a, a, a bush sort of setting. So how the, the Corten steel rusts over time and sort of almost looks like the bark of the eucalypts as well. Um, or the, um, the galvanised really stands out as a bright material, but could also be too reflective in um, winter time as well. But about having really just simple um, markers that people can see. It's an iconic um, symbol, like the Park's big orange triangle element that um, just uses the as a directional thing. So it has to be really visible and make sure that people can um, navigate around, but just as, as elements. Um, this one is another example of um, for uh, interpretive elements about um, gathering leaves and seeds and those sorts of things and teaching people about the different plant species and that sort of thing around the area. Where people can, they pick some up from the ground, they can put them in the little shelf unit to teach other people about it as well. Um, elements of uh, like moments of pause within the landscape, so long trails or from connecting points to points, but we could have these moments that you see in the distance, you can see this small element here, but kind of up close, it, like it draws you to that area and from there you will get drawn onto the next area and get drawn onto the next components of that linking over. 
And then about um, the big image is about um, places to reflect or places to get up high and get a different perspective. So that you've got so many beautiful areas within the landscape to explore that if you just get up a little bit higher sometimes or get sit down lower, you get a different perspective altogether and you see other things that you wouldn't necessarily have come across. Um, so village experience of just navigating around. These are the sort of things that we're thinking about this highlight orange red colour that you see along the Great Alpine Road and throughout the tracks and trails that we could try to incorporate that colour somehow into some sort of element to sort of um, still suits with the existing palette of up in the Alpine, um, but yeah, trying to connect that into the broader network that inside the different planet itself. Then looking at different other materials too with these, this is like a, a content of stainless steel mesh. So we've got it in so many places around town already, but about how the vegetation can grow through or the snow can melt through. Um, so it, it's subtle, but it's still effective for getting people across and um, and interacting with things as well. I like this image of the people sitting on, on this as an element that could be on the embankment too, as something that could be more of a fixed thing. But also stories that could be embedded into the paths as well. That would only be visible in some time when the snow is not there, but it's just ideas and thinking about what we could potentially do. Um, with all the tracks and trails and open spaces, we're looking at making them more active. So not just a path that you walk down, but about things to do along the way as well. So about many pulse tracks that could just be smaller elements for kids to learn on and just to gain a bit more experience and capability. Or it could be binoculars, looking at particular points where there could be a roosting nest or something like that. Um, or balance beams through vegetation areas or learning, letting kids play in the bush as well. I know kids out here probably play in the bush all the time, but for those tourists that come from the city, about encouraging them that they can actually do that as well in designated areas. Um, and then looking at furniture and other um, material precedents, um, we're really interested in um, repurposing materials, so making sure that we reuse, not just throw them away. So we've got these beautiful big timber logs, I'm sure there's other great timber logs around as well, but by um, Repurposing them elsewhere, we can put them up on bigger stilts and they become a more decent seat throughout a park setting as well. Um, with all the potential removal of concrete that we'll be doing out here, um, we can pick up those slabs and put them in as retaining walls or as seating elements or something throughout the site. This is a project that was done, done in Coburg, just north of Melbourne. Um, so they had ripped up all this big concrete and cut it into slabs and things and then just Utilise in other ways. I think that could be a nice way of incorporating the existing palette of materials into just repurposing it in other ways. Um, and then ideas for big picnic tables that you could have underneath these big shelters and things. So it's about family gatherings to one location, like five feet down one end, and then you've got a huge long picnic table that you know you could have 20 people or so around as a good gathering place as well or even as more private gathering spaces that are still outside, that you could even have as a bookable element as well. A lot of councils are doing that these days where they have picnic areas and a bookable facility so you can book it out for a picnic or a birthday party or something like that as well. Um, and just existing materials that are here too. Um, I do really like that it's a cattle grape at the front of the entrance too. Um, this is what we're thinking with shared zone and vehicle and pedestrian. These are just some examples. They're all really urban. It's hard to find a shared zone in a more regional setting, I suppose, because people just do walk down the road. Anyway, that's what you know, most people do. But the idea that you could um, have continuity of pavement across, um, and it's, it still separates the driving and the um, pedestrians, but it sort of mixes, blends them across together as well. Um, also, the idea with the, um, the grass creep that from one perspective it looks like it's all green, but from another it looks like it's um, a hardscaped space as well. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, so from here, we've got one more workshop in the middle of January, so you tell your friends, make sure that they have their say. Um, then all the responses are back by 25th of January. Um, I think 
the people at the email sent out from council, so so that submissions go to. The other thing worth mentioning Robin, is if, if you know of anyone who can't be here for that session as well, mm -hmm. um, we're happy for people if they're in or going through Bright, if they want to drop in and go through the plans with Emily or myself, we're happy to do that at any time. So yeah, just where we're open to. Cool. Yeah, if you can't, people can't even make it up here, but they can make it there or yeah, on country yeah. Well. yeah. And we are going to put hard copies of these up at DP Hunt today and leave them up until the end of this submission period. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's great. Um, so after this round of consultation, when we gather a lot of people consolidating all the feedback and talking with council and other stakeholders as well. Um, talking with traffic engineer and quantity surveyor. Um, they'll be putting together into a design development package, so the designs will be worked up a bit further in more detail to following, taking all this information on. And then we'll have another round of consultation again that we'll be looking at, I think it's about mid to late February or so, as we're aiming for at the moment. So that'll be much detailed, more detailed plans um, for everyone to comment on again to make sure we're on the right track. And cost estimates. And cost yeah. estimates. Yeah. So yeah. people know how much things are going to cost. Yeah. And then we can prioritise things from there, saying, all right, well, I really think this town entrance thing, this part needs to be done first, and that one can wait a couple of years. There's all the still functions like this. We can section out um, staging and planning of different precincts like that as well. Yes. Cool. That's it. Any other uh, questions? Okay. Is there free drinks? That's <laughs> all right. <laughs> 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 <laughs>